1997. After its release four years earlier, Myst continues to be an exceptionally popular game, somehow selling more and more copies as the years go on to quickly become the best-selling PC game of the 1990s. Cyan Worlds is now about to release a highly anticipated sequel to Myst, but how do you follow up a game this popular, which people have already praised as the most immersive adventure game ever made? Well, you make one of the greatest games of all time. For a game that came out only four years after Myst, it's kind of crazy how differently Riven is structured. In Myst, your objective was explicitly laid out for you. Visit each of the Myst Ages and retrieve either the red or the blue pages. For their first outing, this was Cyan's way of keeping the player's goal simple and concrete throughout the different ages of Myst. Nobody had ever played a game like this before, and if they made the goal too overwhelming, players would have probably lost interest. But in Riven, Cyan realized that by derailing the player's objective immediately, they could actually enhance certain aspects of the gameplay. In the opening cutscene, Atris gives you your three objectives for the entire game. Find Ganon, capture him, find and free Catherine, and find a way to signal Atris once you've done those things. And you're like, yeah, okay, I've got an idea of what I'm supposed to do. I've got this prison book to put Gen in. This seems doable. And then you teleport into Riven and immediately get put in jail, and your book is taken away from you by an unknown person who disappears instantly. And now you're like, uh, okay, I don't know where Gen is, and I have no means of capturing him anymore. I don't know where Catherine is, and I have no idea how to signal Atris. Well, maybe I can talk to the guy who put me in jail? He probably- oh. Never mind. This leaves you with only one option. Explore. Exploring is Riven's central objective. Immediately, it seems overwhelming because of how little you know about the world and how little you're given to work with, and it's that sense of overwhelmingness that makes the game feel really huge and open. I think a game's world only feels expansive when there are no boundaries to where the player can go. I just finished playing through Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and what struck me when I started was how huge the map is. You zoom out and you're like, whoa, there's so much stuff to do, but then you realize that the map is segmented by the player's level, so I can't really go to 90% of these places yet because I'll die instantly if I do anything there. Hey, uh, do any of you guys know where I can find Walmart? Google Maps says it should be like right here. No, this is looking more like Sam's Club. All of a sudden, that map that felt so huge feels a lot smaller because you're unlocking new areas linearly, one after another. The action happens here for a few levels, then it goes here for a few levels, and then it goes here for a few levels. The beginning of Riven makes you feel so small and so overwhelmed because you can go anywhere on the island as long as you figure out how to get there. The answer to a puzzle right in front of you might be somewhere on the other side of the map and you're expected to go find it. That's how you make an open world feel open. But where a lot of modern open world games have a lot of dead space on their maps, Riven's map is small enough that every area feels important. Every area tells you something about the world, and ultimately, the only way to solve this game's puzzles is to understand how the world of Riven works. I feel like a lot of games nowadays are doing this thing where they give you details about the world in little dribbles here and there. Riven does this in a different way. Where some games give you lore and world building through data logs or weapon descriptions or whatever, Riven slowly drips more and more context about the world into the player's mind simply as a result of exploring. To me, this is sort of the core of what makes Riven so unique. It's really about the process of understanding a completely different culture by observing the culture's customs, practices, and technology. The more you understand the people, the machines, the world of the game, the more you learn about how to solve the game's puzzles. I don't think I've played a game since then where the storytelling and the gameplay are more tightly intertwined than that. Now, I'm not going to argue that every puzzle in this game is perfect. Even some of the best puzzles in this game have components that are unreasonably difficult, but the puzzles in Riven stand out to me because of what they require from you. Let's back up for a second and talk about Myst. Myst's puzzles are mostly about taking information from point A to point B. You go to the tower, and the tower says, here's the code to the safe, here's how many volts go into the generator, here's what numbers to punch into the planetarium. Then you walk to the safe or the generator or the planetarium, and you punch the numbers in. Riven's best puzzles require you to take information from point A and combine it with context about the world from points B and C to eventually make use of it at point D. For example, throughout the game you'll run into these golden domes. Unlocking them is one of the central puzzles of the game. The domes are locked with a five-digit code. Well, it's a good thing Gen keeps the code in his office, right? Yeah, except for one thing. The code is written using the Rivenese number system, which means nothing to you. If this were missed, you'd walk into the tower, and the tower would just give you a list to translate the numbers off of. But this isn't missed. So how do we decode this? Well, tucked away in a corner of the map, there's a tiny schoolhouse. On a table, there's a wooden toy that Rivenese children use to learn how to count. You spin the spinner, it lands on a number, and the figurine moves that many times. Awesome. Now we can open the domes, right? Well, yeah, except for one other thing. The domes take inputs from 1 to 25, and the toy has only given you the numbers 1 through 10. 
The game requires you to examine the patterns in the way that the symbols themselves are formed to extrapolate the rest of the Rivenese digits. This children's toy is definitely one of the most important things you can find in this game. If you don't understand the numbering system, you can't beat this game at all. At least three separate puzzles rely on your understanding of Rivenies numbers. But the game doesn't direct you here. There are no flashing lights with a big arrow pointing you to the vital information contained in that tiny building. The game just expects you to find it. This puzzle is also representative of how Riven integrates its puzzles with its world. These domes exist in the world with a purpose. Gen built them and they're locked for a very specific reason. This toy also has a function in the world. It's to teach the villagers' children to count. Contrast that with Myst, where the puzzles feel like they were kind of just put there for you to solve. Like these puzzles are just kind of stuck into the world. Look at this puzzle from Myst's Mechanical Age. You can rotate this big fortress, but the only thing you gain access to by doing so is these little tiny islands which each contain a piece of the password you need to unlock the Myst linking book back to Myst Island. As a puzzle game, it's a fine puzzle, but as a fully realized world, why is this here? Atrus's journals tell us that the Mechanical Age once had inhabitants, but we never see any remnants of these inhabitants, and the main puzzle of this age, rotating the fortress, doesn't feel like something the inhabitants would have needed or used. The puzzles in Riven are very different. You're trying to decipher how a civilization operates and communicates, how pieces of machinery work together to accomplish a task. The puzzles seem native to the world of the game. This is what makes Riven a perfect sequel. The creators of Myst set out to give the player a world to explore, and in a lot of ways they did. But Riven takes every single aspect of Myst's exploration and makes it better by creating a place that's already been lived in, rather than a set of worlds seemingly created for the player. Whereas Myst's world feels like it was built for you to walk through, Riven's world seems almost indifferent to whether or not you understand it. I think the best example is the Wark Room. Look at how cool this room is. It's mysterious, it's foreboding, it looks like a painting. It's just eerie. I love this room, especially this shot, which has been burned into my brain since I was six years old. And when you sit in this chair and turn on the red light, this happens. Now this happens whether or not you understand what you've just seen. If you've gone to some other places before seeing this, you know that the Wark is this animal that's hugely feared and respected by the people of Riven, and you know that Gen has weaponized that fear to increase the people's devotion for him. They revere the Wark as a force of nature, but Gen, through his scientific genius, has harnessed nature to facilitate his goals. That knowledge makes this moment hit a lot harder, but the moment will happen regardless of whether you can comprehend its significance. I love that kind of storytelling. In contrast to a lot of stories where the player is the chosen one or some kind of prophesied hero, storytelling like this makes the player feel almost incidental to the world, and it's a very unique and almost scary kind of experience. This feeling of unimportance feeds perfectly into the game's atmosphere. Riven is a game that constantly lives in my head. It's such a unique experience that when I get the itch to play it, there's no other game that can really scratch that itch, and I think that's because the game's atmosphere is like nothing else I've ever played. The puzzles and the storytelling are both incredible, but ultimately it's Riven's ability to evoke a certain feeling that makes it stand out to me. If I had to sum it up in one word, I'd say the game is unsettling. And I feel like that word has a negative connotation, but I'm very much giving the game a compliment by saying that. To talk about what I mean, I feel like I need to talk about loneliness. When people think about loneliness, they probably envision a world where they're alone. That feels almost obvious to say. But that's the loneliness of Mist, not Riven. Mist's ages certainly make you feel alone, since you're the only person on the island or within the game's ages, but they ultimately feel sterile, like there's no hope of running into anybody or any form of life. Riven's loneliness comes from the feeling that other people are very obviously in the world, but they're hiding from you, and that's an extremely unsettling feeling. When you first enter the village, the villagers rush inside their homes and usher their children away from you. If you knock on this door the right way, the villager looks you over and then shuts the door again. These people want nothing to do with you, and that makes you feel like an other in their world. The scariest moment for me playing this game the first time was walking along this path and encountering this little girl, who looks at you for a minute and then runs away. Following her leads you to an empty path. She's gone, and once again, you're alone. That's how to make a truly unforgettable game. Give it a tone, an atmosphere unlike any other that players can never shake out of their minds. Every time I finish Riven, I worry that I've burned myself out on it forever, that I'll never want to play it again. But soon enough, once I've had a little time to forget, that itch comes back. 
and I know it'll be waiting for me, just as lonely and mysterious and beautiful as the first time I played it.